I received the details of a really nice plot of land yesterday in the Oxfordshire area and I thought I'd take a look at uh, a development appraisal. Uh, just a quick desktop study, so let's um, have a look. So this is the plot, this is the agent's brochure. Knight Frank, a really good firm of um, agents and uh, charter surveyors. Um, so they've put together this brochure and here is a really handsome house and this looks like the scenery and the setting. Um, the building plot does have planning permission for a five bedroom family house and it's quite a big plot here as well. So really nice layouts. We've got a garage here or some sort of carport and this looks like the, the actual plot itself and I think this is um, an adjacent car park and this seems to be some sort of public house. But the interesting thing is that it's on a, it's on a road and um, there's some shared access but at least there's access and that means that we should have some services that we can attach to. Yeah, water, maze, electricity available. Uh, great stuff. And there's also a postcode here. Now the postcode is going to be really helpful for finding some comparable evidence. So let's take the postcode and let's do a development appraisal. So we've got some details here already of the plot and we'll just add the postcode so we can link through to some sold prices. Uh, it is a detached house, it's a five bedroom so it's a large house and um, because the plot is up for, uh, this is the, villa, the agent's uh, website, it's up for £450,000 for the actual building plot itself. So um, looks like there's some reasonably close by um, transport links, maybe a bit of a drive to the nearest station. Um, so 450,000 means that we are going to be looking at an end value over um, 800,000. So uh, not average finish, we'll go for best best finish. Okay, and um, let's start off by seeing how the values stack up at around the 850,000 pound mark. Okay, so at that that sort of level we're looking at a site value of around 275 so the agents obviously thinking that the values are the end values are likely to be much higher so let's try the 950 range so we're still still quite far apart from the agents expect potential expectations what they think the the end value of the property could be so let's go for one point let's go for around a million Okay, let's see if we can make the numbers stack up at a million pound valuation. So um, this development uh, appraisal model doesn't um, allow you to, doesn't provide you with any indications of developer's profit for anything over a million. Um, and that's because this uh, over a million pound is something that you need to enter the details for yourself. Um, because it's not an average, it's not a normal kind of um, market value appraisal for a million pound property. So we'll put in a developer's profit of 15% and that brings the values probably a little bit more aligned actually with what the agent is expecting. Um, a 15% return on risk, we do have planning so the risks aren't that great. Um, so we'll change some of these details a bit, a bit uh, further on. So um, still it's looking interesting so let's go back and then take a look at some of the development costs themselves. So, um, so best finish a million pounds we've put in there. The date that we're at is the 14th of March. The property has been on the market for, uh, it's been on their website for just a few days. And we're looking at an estimated date of completing the development and selling on of um, January 2019. So um, these are the development timelines. Um, so the acquisition of the plot itself, um, and then they're preparing to do the works and then the actual construction works themselves. And then an allowance here for a period of time for marketing and selling the property. Um, this is important because um, all the time that we're holding the plot of land and we're incurring costs um, for construction works, those are loans that we have to pay interest on and every month we'll probably be shelling out a few thousand pounds just on interest charges. So 
the time in the overall time is important for the um, valuation process. Now it does have planning permission, so we're going to say that no planning is required. And what that does is it removes the need for any of these costs. Now if we decide to change any of the features of the property, maybe make it a little bit bigger, look to do a different scheme, we will need to go back to planning and we'll need detailed planning. That may mean some additional costs and maybe a planning consultant. But um, we don't need planning, so we'll ignore that for now. Um, development finance and construction costs, um, we'll leave these as um, the model has given us some guidance here and we'll come back to that another time if we um, think this is a, uh, a an opportunity worth pursuing. Professional fees, um, we do have planning uh, drawings, um, probably aren't detailed drawings so we'll get some drawings done. Um, we'll allow for a an engineer but we may not need it seems like it's a fairly um, fairly level site um, don't think there's any significant need there for an engineer so what we'll do is we'll allow something get some outline advice and if we have to uh, retain an engineer for more work we'll have to uh, budget that in Quantity surveyor, um, we'll allow some costs for a quantity surveyor and they can give us um, an idea of the quantities, the plants and machinery that we're likely to need and they can also give us some outline advice on the forms of contracts. Health and safety and energy certificates, great, we'll just leave those as the model has suggested. Um, we may need to come back to a project manager, um, if, so we can see if we hire a project manager then the costs do go up quite significantly. So we'll leave that out for now and we'll, we might have to revisit that another time. Um, building regulations, costs, um, infrastructure levy and um, costs for the local authority. Now, um, let's see, so this is in Oxfordshire. Let's see what the community infrastructure levy might be if we are developing it for... Let's leave it as Oxford for now. Let's just get an idea. Okay, so we're potentially looking at £100 a metre squared. Um, there might be some other charging zones, so we'll have to do some research on this and uh, see if we can find uh, an appropriate infrastructure levy and if it's going to be applied to us. If we're building for ourselves we may not have to incur it. Uh, if we're building for profit then we may get charged an infrastructure levy. So we'll leave that factored in for now and we will have to do some research on that. Uh, site surveys. Um, the site itself looks like it has been used as gardens. Um, we might have some risks there because it's been attached to a public house. Um, it's probably worth doing a desktop survey and if we need to do a detailed site investigation and some trial holes then we'll have to incur some more uh, costs in um, finding out what's actually in the ground. But we'll leave that um, as a desktop study at the minute. Construction costs, um, let's put in for the southeast. So about eight percent above uh, UK average brick and block. Um, the costs actually f between timber frame and brick and block aren't that great. So um, we'll leave it as timber, uh, traditional brick and block. We might come back to this because um, timber frame can be erected much quicker than brick and block, um, and that may save us some cost. But it's not a huge amount of saving at the minute. Um, what we will do though is we'll look at the construction design options and the reason we'll do that is because we do have a garage, it's a two car garage um, and it is not integrated, it's isolated. Um, we're looking at 20,000 but it's more of a carport actually so um, what we might do is allow uh, a little bit less um, than 20,000. Okay, so we're looking at about 1,300 £1, pounds per meter squared, 260,000 pound construction costs. 
That sounds about right, um, but it's it's affecting our land valuation quite a lot. Um, the agents asking for 415, we've got it down to about um, just under three 400 at the minute. Um, now um, we've already made a decision about return on risk at 15%. Um, we've allowed for estate agency fees if we. Um, don't sell the property at the end of the development period then that's obviously a straight saving but we will allow for estate agency fees at this point uh, land financing standard and uh, these are costs to acquire the land itself we've got quite a hefty stamp duty land tax that we're going to have to pay um, once we buy the plot of land then we've got to do uh, get some insurance and we've got to put some fencing up to secure it becomes it because uh, becomes our responsibility so um, initially the current valuations are coming out at a land valuation of around uh, the four hundred thousand pound mark now um, that's quite interesting because that gives me an impression that the agent is thinking he could probably achieve greater than a million pounds um, for the property and they are likely to be thinking about the 1.1 mark yeah look at that about 1.1 mark maybe a little bit under so let's look at some comparable evidence so we've got the postcode from the details that we entered earlier and we'll go to Zoopla first of all and what that will do is it will give us an idea of prices that have been sold for previously sold properties and we're only interested in uh, if it let us we're only really interested in detached properties okay and what we can see here is we do have some properties that are over a million a couple of million there um, about a million pound mark there big range of property values all sorts of types of properties in the area and but we do have some reasonable evidence that properties could be worth over a million in the area um, but this is based on Zoopla's own um, automated valuation model so we're going to have to treat this 1.3 for a five bed um, we we'll have to treat it with caution because it is a model and it's based on a property that was sold um, in 2000 um, for 450. So they're just estimating what the um, inflation has been on on property prices and what um, uh, something could be worth now. What we may do actually is uh, let's go to right uh, let's go to right move and see if we can find some properties for sale in the area yeah this postcode only houses uh, anytime let's see if we can find something that's been sold price range well um, they're asking 450 for the land so we're looking at something over 900,000 let's try and keep it to a range of 1.5 number of bedrooms yeah, minimum number is four. Let's go for something comparable. And there are no properties. Let's extend the search um, half a mile. Update results. Okay, well that's interesting. There aren't any properties that are either for sale or have sold recently, according to Right Move uh, for this postcode, even within half a mile. I'm sure if we extend it to within a mile, we might get a few more properties. Not really. Um, something within three miles of the area, so some level of indication that four or five bed properties could potentially go over a million pounds. So quite possible, quite possible that we could achieve something north of a million pounds. Um, so definitely some further investigation warranted on this development appraisal possibly a site visit and maybe get on the phones and 
uh, see if we can find any evidence to support a five bedroom detached house uh, on a third of an acre almost um, potentially achieving um, a million pound valuation in order to um, meet the asking price of about 450. Um, but as it currently stands, we might be looking at, if we want to go ahead, we might be looking to negotiate down um, the asking price. Um, so yeah, we might be looking to negotiate the price down towards the uh, 415, um, 425 uh, range. Um, but um, quite a handsome looking um, building there, house, nice layout. Um, Looks like it's a nice location, good gardens. Um, looks like it's reasonably low risk. Um, so definitely uh, worth further investigation. So what we'll do is we'll save this uh, appraisal and uh, we'll do some more digging around.